Can you get the deep flavor and bark of an offset smoker using a convenient pellet grill? That's what I tested in this video, and I'll be honest with you guys, the results were mixed, but I learned some really interesting things along the way, and I think I got really close. So you guys can be the judge. Let's get smoking. While I'm trimming this brisket, let's talk about why I'm doing this video. For me, it comes down to flavor versus convenience. I've always felt like you can't beat the flavor you can get on a brisket from an offset smoker, and the bark is out of this world. But I also like the convenience of a pellet grill. A lot of times, I don't have time to babysit an offset smoker all day, so it got me thinking, could I get the best of both worlds? Amazing bark like on an offset smoker, but using the convenience of a pellet grill. Well, there's a few challenges to get there. Let's go over to my Traeger and talk about them. The first challenge with a pellet grill is the radiant heat coming off of the deflector plate. Unlike an offset smoker, a pellet grill has a large steel deflector plate immediately under the grate in between the grate and the burn pot. Now, at first glance, this might seem like a good thing because that deflector plate is deflecting all of that radiant heat coming off of the burn pot and it's preventing it from burning the bottom of your brisket. But in some ways, the opposite is true because that steel deflector plate holds on to a ton of energy. It can pass on a lot of that radiant heat and burn the bottom of your brisket if you're not careful. Now let's look at an example because I love real life examples. I have the Traeger running at 225 degrees Fahrenheit, low and slow, right? You wouldn't think you'd have any issues at that low of a temperature, but look at the temperature of the deflector plate. I'm using my laser temperature gun and the temperature, as you can see, it's much higher than 225 degrees Fahrenheit. It may be 225 in the surrounding air of the Traeger in the cooking chamber, but that deflector plate has absorbed a lot of heat from the burn pot and its temperature of the metal is actually much higher than 225. So that metal is very hot and it's shedding a lot of radiant heat that is going right into your meat because of how close the deflector plate is to the meat. So how do we get around this? Well, I've tried a lot of different things in the past. I've tried putting a water pan in between the meat and the deflector plate, and that's worked actually really well. But I wanted to do something a little bit different for this test. What I did is I propped one side of the grate with bricks so it was at an angle. That way when I put the brisket on, it would have some standoff distance from the hot deflector plate and it wouldn't get as burnt. The other reason I did this is because I wanted airflow that was more similar to an offset smoker. On an offset smoker, the hot air comes from the firebox and it goes over the brisket, cooking it from above before it exits the stack. And I wanted to replicate that, so I blocked off the gaps in the Traeger with aluminum foil so the heat would be forced to travel up the far side of the grill and then travel over top of the brisket and then out the stack, just like an offset smoker. And after I placed the brisket on the Traeger, point side down so it could take more of that heat, I inserted my meter remote probe directly into the point so I could monitor the internal temperature of the meat and the ambient temperature. Guys, I've been using the meter for about four years now. I think I have the same two that I originally started out with and they're still going strong, they're still accurate, they're still working well. They have a ton of battery life, which really surprises me because I would think after so many hours of logging brisket cooks that they would kind of diminish in, in their capacity to hold on a charge, but they can still last over 12 hours and overnight in a lot of cases. So really impressed by the meter. If you guys want to check one out and get one, I'll link it in the description section below. It's probably one of my biggest tips for fire management on an offset smoker is to get one of these remote probes. You can just plug it right into the meat. You can measure the ambient temperature, not just at great level, but directly before it hits the meat, which I think is super important. And then you can look at it directly on your phone and you can track the temperature journey that's, uh, that's happening on the offset smoker of that temperature right before it hits the meat. And when it starts dipping down a little bit, that kind of alerts me to go outside, add another split to the fire. It's made it a lot easier for me as a new dad to kind of do dad stuff and then come back outside and not have to babysit the smoker all day. I know exactly when that temperature is going down and what it's doing. So I'd highly recommend picking one up. After inserting the meter, I set the Traeger to 175 degrees Fahrenheit and I plan to leave it at that temperature for four hours. 
Yes, you heard right. I set the Traeger to 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Let me explain that a little bit. In addition to the radiant heat coming off the deflector plate, another challenge with a pellet grill is the lack of smoke, or to be more specific, the lack of a particular kind of smoke. In an offset smoker, you can burn a really small fire, but still get a higher temperature at great level. Let's say a small fire in a firebox could create a great level temperature at the brisket of 275 degrees Fahrenheit. And that fire is producing all sorts of combustion gases and smoke and flavors from the uh, wood, which has a uh, higher moisture content than pellets of maybe 10 to 20%. So you're getting all sorts of flavors coming out of that offset smoker. So with an offset smoker, we can afford to burn a smaller fire that's less efficient, but we can still get a ton of smoke, we can get a ton of flavor, and we can most importantly get a higher temperature at grill level even with that smaller fire. Pellet grills, on the other hand, are much different. For starters, we lose out on a little bit of flavor because we're burning hardwood splits on an offset smoker that have a moisture content of around 10 to 20%. That moisture content, in addition to the way that we burn, our wood on an offset smoker produces all sorts of different flavor compounds and much more smoke flavor in comparison to a pellet smoker where we're, we're burning pellets that are five to maybe 6% moisture content, very dry, very low moisture, highly processed, so we're not getting as much flavor. So we're barely getting any smoke because that burn pot is burning closer to complete combustion. So if I wanted to smoke at a temperature of say 275 degrees Fahrenheit on my pellet grill, which I cook at all the time on my offset, smoker and it helps me get that really crispy sugar cookie bark, then I would have a double whammy of problems. The first problem is that at that high a temperature, it's, the burn pot is barely producing any smoke at all because it's so close to more complete combustion. And the second problem is when I set my Traeger to 275, the temperature of the deflector plate is so high and that deflector plate is going to be burning the bottom of your brisket. Okay, so we've talked about the problems a lot, but what are the solutions to these problems? The first thing is we want to cook at 175 degrees Fahrenheit on the pellet grill, very low temperature, so that we can get that smoke, that less complete combustion, and more flavor compounds coming from the burn pot. And then after that, we can ramp up the temperature so we're actually cooking the brisket, otherwise it would take two days to cook it. Uh, but at that point, once we go up to 225, we wanna add a pellet tray. I know that a lot has been said about them recently and that they create an ashy flavor. If it's overdone, a pellet tray can definitely produce that ashy uh, flavor. So what I've learned is that I put a pellet tray in when I ramp up from that initial very low and slow smoke of the first four hours at 175. As soon as I go up to 225, uh, when it's not producing any more smoke, I add half a tray of pellets and that will produce some more smoke during that next phase of the cook. Okay, that was a lot of talking, so let's get back to smoking. Uh-oh, I just realized I ran out of pellets, so I have to go to Home Depot to get some more. I'm gonna have to take you with me, bud. We're going to Home Depot again. That's your favorite place, isn't it? Okay, you don't look too happy. All right, there's not much selection here. Do you want hickory or apple? Hickory? Apple. Hickory it is. <laughs> yeah, you like hickory. All right, now we're back on track and it's been four hours of super low and slow smoking at 175 degrees Fahrenheit. I spritzed the bark at this point with some Worcestershire sauce and water, mainly because I wanted to help darken the bark up and prevent the edges from drying out when I ramp the temperatures up, which I, at this point, turned up to 225 degrees Fahrenheit, like I talked about before. To light my pellet tray, I used my grill gun. Now, this is a very versatile barbecuing tool. I've used it for a while now, and I usually use it to start my charcoal in less than 60 seconds instead of getting all the smoke and waiting for 15 minutes for a chimney starter to, uh, to get that charcoal ready. I just hit it with my grill gun for 60 seconds or less, and my, uh, my firebox is ready to go on my offset smoker. The other great thing is I can use it to light my pellets really quickly if I'm using a pellet tray. A lot of times with a pellet tray, if you just light it with like matches or even the little uh, underpowered uh, creme brulee torches uh, that I used to use, um, you, you can get problems with the, the pellets going out halfway through the cook, but I've never had a problem when I'm lighting it with this huge flamethrower. If you guys wanna pick up one of these grill guns, then I highly recommend them. Go check out the description section below. Um, I've got a deal where you can actually get 10% off. Just use uh, the code STBBQ on checkout 
and pick one up for yourself. Now, after another two hours of cooking at 225 degrees Fahrenheit, I turned the brisket around and I spritzed it again. The reason I turned it around is I wanted the flat to get exposed to more of the heat. I do this on my offset as well because that big point muscle can take all the heat and deflect it right over the flat so the flat never renders really well. Now, after a bunch of these two hour increments of spritzing it every two hours, the brisket finally got to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. I wasn't really ready to wrap it yet because the bark wasn't where I wanted it to be. I looked at it and it wasn't offset smoker bark like I usually get on my offset smoker. But the problem was it was already 9 p.m. at night. I was exhausted from the week. I'm not gonna just breeze over this. I'm looking after my son right now. I'm on parental leave for um, the next two months. It's really hard. I even had a date night with my, with my wife on that night and I had to um, just cancel it. I was just like, honey, uh, I'm, I can go into bed. <laughs> it was like 9 p.m. at night and I was just done for the week. I've had sleep deprivation in my life a lot. Like I used to be in the military, in the Canadian forces. I'm used to it. I was a lot younger then, obviously. This is kind of different. Like you're looking after uh, a baby all day, all week, and uh, it, gets, uh, it gets pretty tiring. Anyway, as it relates to this video, I had to go to bed. I was pretty much done with this video. That's why I was ready to give up on it. That's why I called this video a fail video because I don't feel like I put the amount of effort that I wanted to into it and I kind of reached this obstacle. So what I decided to do, instead of giving up on the video, I just uh, set my Traeger to 200 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, I just went to bed. Uh, I set up my baby monitor so I could monitor it in case of a fire. Um, I set up uh, my meter probe so I could monitor, monitor the, te the temperature. And my hope was that in the morning, it wouldn't be as dry as a hockey puck. And I was hoping that um, the bark would be really good, like I could get on my offset smoker, but I had no idea what was gonna happen. Now guys, I wanted to pause for a moment here to talk about my Traeger. I've had it for a few years now, and I've come to really trust it. I've took, taken it to barbecue competitions, I've placed really highly um, using it. It's really good in barbecue competitions for holding food after I smoke it in my uh, in my offset smoker. And it's really awesome for just day-to-day -day cooking for my family. Is it made in China? A lot of people have issues with that. Yeah, it's made in China. And that's a good thing because products that are made in China make our lives better because otherwise we wouldn't be able to afford all of the consumer products that we're able to these, these days. I can buy anything I want on Amazon for such a cheap price that I don't have to even think about it anymore. It's it's great. My life is better because of products made in China. So I don't have any issues that it's made in China. It's good quality. It's lasted me a very long time. It's never had any issues. At this point, I'm gonna be looking at uh, uh, applying for the Traeger affiliate program, probably. Check out the description section below. I'll link the Pro 575 and uh, I recommend it. So if you're in the market for a pellet grill, Traeger guys, they're good grills. Okay, the moment of truth. So I got up in the morning, I was actually feeling really refreshed. I think I just needed a good night's sleep. Then I open up the Traeger and what did I see? I saw this. Surprisingly looks pretty good. I mean, I've smoked briskets before on my offset that uh, don't even have that good of bark. But that being said, I've also smoked a lot of briskets that have way darker bark, especially after 24 hours of smoking it. And after I removed the brisket from the Traeger, I finished it in uh, butcher's paper with tallow on it in the oven at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. And it actually finished at 180 degrees Fahrenheit, which was, I almost uh, took a double take and didn't believe what the what the uh, the probe was sort of probing at. Not the temperature, but it was really tender but it was only uh, 180 degrees Fahrenheit. I've never had that before, but it's because I smoked it all night at 200. Really interesting. I've never finished a brisket like that at such a low temperature. It's kind of like sous vide it. So let's get to slicing it, and then we can move on to the taste test and see if it actually has that offset bark flavor. <laughs> All right, let's do a quick taste test here. First from the flat. The first thing I notice is, let's take a look at the, the bark. Is it rendered? Yes, it is. It's pulling apart really easily. It's squishy. It's not peeling off in a big strip. So I'd say that's pretty much a success for bark rendering. Let's see how it tastes. Mmm. 
It's juicier than I would have thought for a select grade brisket that I cooked for a total of 24 hours. I'm pretty impressed by it actually. It's a little bit drier than my select grade briskets usually turn out, but that's to be expected, but still pretty juicy. Is it like offset smoker bark? It's getting pretty close. It doesn't have that acrid taste that I get when I over smoke something with my, uh, my pellet tray. It doesn't have that dirty smoke taste. It has a pretty clean uh, smoke taste. What I would say though, it doesn't have as many flavors as the bark I usually get on my offset smoker, but it does have a different kind of flavor. It's like a cleaner wood fired flavor. It's almost, I could describe it as a little bit licorice-y, like black licorice. I'll taste the, the point muscle here. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. That's really flavorful. That's good. It's approaching sugar cookie bark that I usually get on my offset smoker. It's it's crunchy, it's fatty. It's got a little bit of spring to it and a little bit of crunchiness to it. The, the fat is rendered. It doesn't quite have the impactful flavor that my offset gives it. It doesn't have as, like I said before, as many, as many flavors, as, as much smokiness and as much um, complexity as the offset smoker. Um, what, what other kind of flavors can I pick up on here? Black licorice. Salt, pepper, obviously. Smoke, but really subdued smoke. It's got a good finish, really good finish, really clean finish. Way more smoky on the back end of the tongue. It's almost like it reminds me of store-bought uh, smoked sausage or smoked jerky or smoked summer sausage that you get from the store where it's not overpoweringly smoky. It's just a little hint of smoke that appeals to the broad public and that is how they market their commercial products so that like that's the kind of flavor i'm getting here with um with that really heavy black licorice and salt and pepper yeah i know this is a long taste test guys but i'm trying to give the the best uh taste test possible uh let me take one more bite here it's really good it's not offset smoker bark but uh it is really flavorful and it's got its own sort of unique flavor so I mean, I think we've got as close as we can come to getting offset smoker bark on a, on a pellet grill. Okay, time for some conclusions. Was this a fail video? I mean, in a lot of ways it kind of was because I don't think I got true offset bark on a uh, pellet smoker brisket, but I did come really close and I have some ideas in the future to get even closer. First conclusion, I think there's two kind of different types of flavor experiences that are produced by an offset smoker and a pellet smoker. It's like broiling versus frying something or like baking versus roasting or like using an air fryer versus a deep fryer. You can cook the same food and it's edible and tasty at the end of the day when it's done, but you're just teasing out different properties from that food and you're making it taste different because of the way that you cook it. It's the same with a pellet grill uh, and it's the same with an offset smoker. They're just different tools for different jobs that produce a little bit different results, but they still lead to really good results. The second thing I learned that I didn't expect to learn because I uh, had to go to bed that night and I just left my brisket in the Traeger at 200 overnight and it, it smoked for like an additional nine to 10 hours that I wasn't anticipating is that finishing your brisket low, super low and slow is a viable strategy. I finished my brisket at 180 degrees Fahrenheit as opposed to 203 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm sure it resulted in a juicier brisket because all of that moisture wasn't being squished out and squeezed out uh, when, when my briskets normally would have hit that 200 zone with all the water evaporating and, and getting squeezed out. So really interesting to note, I might try it in the future. And notes for next time to get that bark even closer to offset smoker bark. I will be using probably a water pan because it's worked for me in the past, but I will be using that water pan placed directly on the deflector plate because it'll act as a better heat sink. The second thing I'll be doing next time is I won't be using the diagonal slant method. It, it, uh, it inhibited the airflow too much. And I'm, I'm just going to let the, the, the Traeger run like it was supposed to run. And third, I'm going to try insulating my Traeger. I'll either get the Traeger cover or a welding blanket and I'll insulate it so it holds temperatures better so that the burn pot doesn't have to work as hard to create those temperatures at great level so that it can create more smoke. So those are kind of the three things that I'll try in the future. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you guys are interested in talking more uh, about this to me directly, you can join my Patreon. I'll link it in the description section below. 
We've got a really cool little community there. We're all helping each other uh, get better at barbecue, and I'd love for you to join me. Thanks so much, guys, and happy smoking.